Assalamualaikum. In part 2, we have learned that carbon lies between aluminium and zinc in the reactivity series of metals. For today, in part 3, let's find out the position of hydrogen. The position of hydrogen in the reactivity series of metals can be easily determined based on the ability of hydrogen to displace oxygen from metal oxides. For example, when hydrogen reacts with iron oxide, hydrogen displaces oxygen from iron oxide to produce iron and water. When hydrogen can displace oxygen from metal oxide, then the hydrogen is more reactive than the metal. Maybe some of you will ask me why the water symbol is not H2O. We all know that the chemical symbol for water is H2O. For this example, I just want to clarify the changing partners between the elements involved in the reaction. Don't worry, you will learn how to write and balance chemical equations better next year. How about when hydrogen is unable to displace oxygen from metal oxides? If that's so, there will be no reaction. For example, the chemical reaction between hydrogen and zinc oxide will give no reaction where water will not be formed. When hydrogen cannot displace oxygen from metal oxide, then the hydrogen is less reactive than the metal. The position of hydrogen in the reactivity series of metals can be determined by passing dry hydrogen gas over hot metal oxides. The dry hydrogen gas is passed through the combustion tube to displace all the air in the apparatus. When all the air in the combustion tube has been removed, the hydrogen gas coming out from the small hole of the tube is ignited. Metal oxide is heated strongly while hydrogen gas is passed over it until the reaction is complete. The chemical reaction between iron oxide and hydrogen will produce a bright glow. A brown powder changes to gray. Hydrogen is more reactive than iron. When zinc oxide reacts with hydrogen, no glow is observed means there is no reaction. The white powder becomes yellow when hot and white when cold. Hydrogen is less reactive than zinc. The reaction between lead to oxide and hydrogen produces a bright flame. A yellow powder changes to white. Therefore, hydrogen is more reactive than lead. The reactivity series of metals is now complete. Hydrogen is located between zinc and iron. We can start memorizing the current mnemonic method like this. Please stop calling me a cute zebra. I hope seriously like calling him as a smart guy. Extraction of metals is a process to obtain metals from their ores. The extraction of metals involves the reduction of metal ores to metals. There are two main methods are used to extract metals from their ores. First, electrolysis of metal compounds in the molten state for metals that are located higher than carbon. Second, the reduction of metal oxides by carbon for metals that are located lower than carbon in the reactivity series of metals. So, it is important to determine the position of the metal in the reactivity series of metals before we can choose the most suitable method 
in the extraction of metals. For metals higher than carbon in the reactivity series of metals such as potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, and aluminium, the extraction of metals must be carried out by the electrolysis of molten metal compounds. For metals lower than carbon, like zinc, iron, tin, and lead, the method used is the burning with carbon. Copper and mercury is extracted by burning directly in air. Meanwhile, no extraction is needed for silver and gold because they are so unreactive. They are found as the native metals and not as a compound. The extraction of iron from its ore is carried out in a blast furnace. A blast furnace is a smelting furnace in the form of a tower into which a blast of hot compressed air can be introduced from below. A mixture of concentrated iron oxide, coke and limestone is added into a blast furnace through the top. A very hot blast of air is pumped into the furnace through the bottom. The production of iron is begin with the formation of carbon monoxide. Carbon reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide reacts with excess carbon to produce carbon monoxide. Carbon and carbon monoxide respectively react with iron oxide to produce iron and carbon dioxide. The formation of slag is all started when limestone or calcium carbonate decomposes to form calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Then, the calcium oxide reacts with impurities such as sand to form slag or calcium silicate. Finally, iron and slag are channeled out from the blast furnace. Tin ore exists naturally as cassiterite. Tin ore is washed with water to remove sand and other impurities. Tin ore also is roasted to take away foreign matter such as carbon, sulfur, and oil. Then the tin ore is mixed with coke and limestone and is heated in a blast furnace at a high temperature. The production of tin is begin with the formation of carbon monoxide. Carbon reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide reacts with excess carbon to produce carbon monoxide. Then, both of carbon and carbon monoxide react with tin oxide respectively to produce tin and carbon dioxide. Slag is formed when the limestone or calcium carbonate decomposes to calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Then, calcium oxide reacts with sand or silicon dioxide, producing calcium silicate or slag. Finally, tin and slag are channeled out from the blast furnace. Between molten iron and molten slag, which one will float to the bottom part of the furnace? Yes, molten iron flows to the bottom part of the blast furnace. This is because molten slag is less dense than molten iron. It will float on top of the molten iron. Compare between these two scenarios. If you wish to build a house, which one you will prefer the most? Yes, an area which is close to nature and tranquility. Mining contributes to problems. Air pollution, 
due to burning of fuels and from the gases released from blast furnaces as well as water and sound pollution. The mining of oils is the reason for the destruction of habitat, soil erosion, and high consumption of electrical energy. So here come with the solutions. First, replanting trees. The tree roots keep the soil strong and binded to the land to avoid soil erosion. Second, use eco-friendly technologies to avoid harmful gases released to the atmosphere. Thirdly, use proper waste disposal. Water can be reused on mining sites as grey water for washing equipment or flushing staff toilets. Thank you.